friends welcome back to my channel and today it's another episode where I'll be sharing some tips that I have learned in this journey in becoming a professional artist so let's get started okay, so I should remind you guys that I am a healthcare worker and unlike a lot of people I don't have the luxury of staying at home or work from home so I do have to go to work um, on a scheduled basis. I So it's basically I film my videos and do my YouTube recordings when on my off, when I'm on my schedule off. And I'm on my schedule off so I'm able to record today. Thankfully, Belize is still, last I heard, still officially COVID-19 free. But if that day should ever comes, uh, I'll be called into action. I will have to go into the isolation unit and work and videos will not be coming from me as frequently as I used to. I know I develop a schedule of uploading on Mondays and Fridays. It may not happen that way for a couple weeks or for a few weeks. So please keep that in mind. I am a healthcare worker. I am a nurse and I do have to work. Okay. And it's an essential service, especially in today's um, day and age so I don't have that luxury to stay at home and with that long notification let's get back and let me tell tell you guys oh gosh let me tell you guys what I have learned more things that I have learned on this journey in art so today we're talking about shopping for art supplies Okay, so uh, first up, I keep saying know what you want. Art is a broad, broad, broad umbrella. It's kind of like the universe. I like to say nursing is a universe and you just need to find where you belong. Well, art is the same thing. It is a universe out there. You just need to find out where you belong. And there is so much different forms of art. And there's so much different mediums in art. I mean, even performance, you know, performing, dancing, acting, that's an art. Um, sculpting, that's an art. So, and painting, illustration, digital, those are all art. So you just need to know, first, before you get into it, you need to know what form of art that you are attracted to. So tip one, find out what form of art you are attracted to. If you're attracted to the performance art, then maybe acting, dancing is more for you. Um, if you're more attracted to three-dimensional arts, like sculpting and puppetry, maybe that's for you too. And for me, I'm attracted to traditional illustration. So I went into painting. And going into traditional illustration, again, that's a huge huge galaxy if art itself is a universe then traditional illustration is a galaxy is a galaxy because there are so much different mediums i mean there's so much different um stuff that you can practice with basically i mean there's oil painting there's watercolors there's gouache there's acrylics there's graphites there's charcoal, there's pastels, there's color pencils, there's markers, there's pens. And so there's just a broad spectrum of mediums that you can be, that you can use when doing traditional art. Now the form of traditional art that I was originally attracted to, well, initially, I should say, attracted to was watercolor. And it all went back to my days when I was a scrapbooker and a card maker. One of my favorite scrapbookers and card makers, Christine Wagner, I believe her name is. Um, I could never say her last name properly. She does have a YouTube channel. She was also a watercolorist and she's always doing watercolor and calligraphy on her YouTube channel. And I was it mesmerized me literally every time she did a watercolor card um, and she showed how to do a watercolor greeting card I was mesmerized by it and that initially got me into traditional art I know I'm, I'm actually winding up to shopping um so what I did was I said to myself and again this 
attracted me to art and it goes back to shopping i'm actually talking about shopping please keep in mind that at the end of the day i'm talking about shopping okay so i said to myself why don't instead of me buying all these stamps because as card makers you actually have to buy the stamps so you can make the greeting cards and the inks and the ink pads and i said well instead of me buying all these stamps why don't i just learn how to draw learn how to draw the the, the figures and learn how to do calligraphy and that way i could minimize the expense of buying all these stamps lettering stamps and these picture stamps and fonts and all these things just learn how to draw them learn how to do write them out in calligraphy and again that was how i got into it and getting into art that way was okay but then i had to like watch so much videos and this is where the topic of shopping comes in because there's a lot of stuff out there for beginner artists there's a lot of advice there's a lot of people endorsing stuff there's a lot of people sponsoring um, popular youtubers so you really need to be alert and you really need to know how to go and I mean there will be traps because I fell for it a couple of times and we'll talk about those and like I was talking about traps and I wasn't going to any specific art school so basically I was just watching a bunch of YouTube videos looking at a bunch of pictures um, through search and Pinterest and learning the fundamentals of art and color concepts and all these things and how medium works and what medium doesn't work together and because of Christina's um, affiliation for watercolor I initially got attracted to that now one of the things when I was doing the research the first watercolor palette I ever got was actually the artist love watercolor palette and the reason I got it wasn't because Christina endorsed it it was because I was doing the research and I wanted a professional like remember I was new to art I wanted a professional like uh, watercolor set watercolor palette without having to pay three four five hundred dollars for a for a set basically and I thought I thought in my little newbie self that artist loft was a good watercolor set so I got the artist loft watercolor now initially I did my research in my country and I went all over looking for something that was student friendly um and I honestly couldn't find it to be honest I couldn't find it it was there I won't say it was not there it was there but I couldn't find it and so I talked to a friend and they were able to bring a set of artist love 36 colors watercolor set from the states for me I ordered it through Amazon on my credit card and they brought it for me when they came there goes my dog I don't know what they're working on now anyway and that's what I started with tried it for a few times found out it was not exactly what I wanted it was way too chalky way too clumpy I didn't like it so I did more research did more looking and my first advice I'm gonna give you let me break get some water and give you my first advice so the first advice I'm gonna offer you guys is don't fall for the hype let me put on some lights here yes don't fall for the hype okay and the, i'm not saying that as uh something to say this is bad or it's all bad uh there are some i'm not saying all of them there are some youtubers that are out there who may endorse a certain product and they're not doing it because they genuinely love that product they're doing it because the manufacturer or the supply chain or the or the people behind the scenes are pushing that product and so they hired these youtubers or these reviewers to endorse that product so the product could sell more and that's what i mean don't fall for the hype because there are going to be a lot of them. I mean, when they're pushing a product into the market, they're going to marketers and manufacturers are really going to go all out for it because they want you to think that what they're bringing out is the best there is in the world. And not all the times what they're bringing out is the best product for you. And that's what you need to 
be very keen on it might not be best for you and I fell for it a couple times and I say a couple because when I'm thinking about doing this video I was thinking about all the products that I bought because a specific person said it I was like wait a minute I didn't buy all these things because they said it. I actually did my research and I knew these were products I wanted to genuinely try and these are products I will genuinely use I did fell for it twice I bought Two products that a uh, youtuber said was great and it didn't work out for me <laughs> and I've only used them a couple of times it really is not working out for me but hmm, I fell for the hype, the hype twice and that's what I'm telling you don't fall for it do your research do your research okay you basically have to be foresighted you know is this a product that I will use is this a product that I will enjoy using if you're the type of person who is not attracted to watercolor but every time you notice that they're talking about acrylic paints you get all excited then don't buy watercolor paints buy acrylic if you know you're the type of person that don't think that you can draw with pencils and graphites but every time they talk about markers and alcohol-based markers, you get excited, then don't buy coloring pencils. Buy alcohol-based markers. Learn what you like and invest in what you're going to use. Now, I'm not, listen, I did not say that the products that they're endorsing are, is bad. I'm not saying it's the worst. I'm not saying they're just endorsing it because it's so terrible. I am saying they're endorsing it because it's a good product, but it may not be the product for you. So you really have to know what you want, you really have to know what you like, and you really have to know how to invest your money. Basically, that's what I'm saying. You really need to know what you are attracted to, what forms of medium you're attracted to. I think Daniel Smith just brought out a new watercolor palette. It's, it excites me, but it's not something I'll be trying to figure out how to get. I mean, it's not. I have Daniel Smith paints, and more likely the colors I have, I can mix whatever colors I want because I have the essential set. So I'm like, nah, okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't excite me, you know? And, and that's what I'm talking about. You got to really be keen because, like I said, there's some people out there, reviewers and stuff, who are paid to endorse these products. So, and... You can't say, oh, they're bad people. I mean, this is how they make an income. This is a part of their job. So, yeah, they're doing their job. What you need to do is to be keen on what you want. You can't blame them for selling the product. That's what they're supposed to do. What you need to do is to be keen on what you want. Do you want that product? Is Does that product excite you? When you see yourself in three years, is that a product you'll see yourself using? That's why I keep saying the best art supply is the one you use. Okay, the second tip I have to say is how to use reviews on how I use reviews on YouTube. The first thing I do when I'm thinking about purchasing a new art supply is I do my research. And when I do my research, I don't only watch YouTube videos. I mean, I researched it on Amazon. Amazon review section is a great resource um, tool for people who are thinking of purchasing something. I mean, whenever I'm thinking about purchasing something, I, w I literally read the reviews. I read what they, the, the persons who graded the, the product one star. I rated the, the reviews of the person who rated it three stars. I read the reviews of the people who gave it all five stars and I see from a count of one to five how many stars the product have and how many people voted on this product that's what I do I do my reviews and I read the Amazon reviews and then I not only read Amazon I try to find that product on other online retailers and I read their reviews as well how do they feel about the product because not everybody shops on Amazon so how did they feel about the product? The second thing I do is I go to the manufacturing website for that product and I read what the manufacturer is saying. What is the selling point to this product that the manufacturer is trying to bring across to me? 
and I compare that to what the reviewer, the people who purchased the product, who reviewed the product, who are telling me what their experiences are with that product is saying and does it match what the manufacturer is saying? I mean, if the manufacturer is saying that this product, let's say the manufacturer is talking about coloring pencils. If the manufacturer is saying, are these coloring pencils bright? Are these coloring pencils um, soft, lead, they're smooth, they're blendable, do it layer easily. Um, if the manufacturer is saying these, when you go to Amazon and read the reviews, the people who buy this product, who are looking at this product and telling you what their experience is, are they saying is it bright? Are they saying it layers? Does it say it blends? You know, does it say the core is soft? What are they saying about this product? The second thing I do, the third thing, sorry, the third thing I do, then I watch my YouTube videos because the YouTuber, like me, will show you how the product works, what qualities, properties these products have. We will also do reviews on products and tell you about the product and what our experience um, are when working with the product, but we'll actually show you the properties of the product, how the product works, what qualities the product have, what tricks you can use with the product, especially if it's a coloring pencil. Maybe if you um, burnish it real well, the color will get intensely dark, you have to lighten your hand. Maybe those are things that are not said in the Amazon review and maybe those are things that the manufacturer will not tell you. So the YouTuber will tell you how to use the product. And after you have finished doing all that, and I'm not taking, and I'm not saying only use one YouTuber. I mean, if you choose to use my videos to make your decision on getting a particular product, thank you, thank you, because all products that I have talked about on my channel are products that I actually use and I actually endorsed. But use multiple resources out there. I mean, I'm not the only art reviewer that is out there. There are millions of us, you know, just see what, I mean, what I say maybe can be the same thing that they're saying, or maybe I found something differently about the product that they haven't found, or maybe they found something differently about the product that I didn't talk about. So you want to do like, I don't know, a spectrum, you know, go and do a spectrum of views. I mean, I'm always watching art reviews anyway i have like 16 of them i watch before i even decide to buy a particular product and then i do the reviews i do this so before i decide to buy something i i put at least a three months investment in searching and researching on that product before i decide to do a investment into it okay so i hope this tip is able to help you i know i'm doing this it's because my chair can swing um, it's just a bad habit I have. Um, I fell for it twice. And the only reason I fell for it twice is because what I imagined, how I imagined the product to work was not exactly how it actually turned out. And the best way I can say, it's not because the product was bad. Actually, the product is, is very good. What I found out was I wasn't working with the product the way it was supposed to work with the product. And I think in one of my previous blogs, I said the surface is everything, especially when it comes to traditional art and watercolor. And that's the form of art I'm practicing right now, traditional watercolor. The surface is everything. And I was using that particular product on a surface it didn't really match. And so because I was doing it on that particular surface, I developed a disdain for the product. And it was all because I wasn't working with the product properly. But when I started to invest in surfaces and found out that, hey, different surfaces react with, diff with art mediums differently, then I said, you know what, I really have to match the medium with its surface, its proper surface. And I'm not saying to go out there and spend a bunch of money. No, do the research. You know, there are really good papers out there that you can use and so you know do the research but i had to learn that 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 particular product works with a particular surface it didn't work with the surface that i was using it with so i had to get the surface that it works better with and that's how i was able to enjoy it but i had already developed a disdain for it 
that I don't use it as often. And at the end of the day, after saying all this, I think I blabbered enough. I hope this video is not 30 minutes longer. If it is, I'm going to edit like crazy. Um, let's stick back to my point. First thing I said is know what you want learn yourself i mean when you're going into something you have to discover who you are first and if you are this type of person you'll be attracted to this thing so invest in the thing that you're attracted to when you're making that investment do the research read the reviews talk to the manufacturer or email the manufacturer of that particular medium or that particular product email them find out what they want you as the customer customer to know about this product watch the youtube tutorials they will tell you how to use it because they have used it themselves they have went through you know the ups and downs of the product they learn how to work with it so watch their reviews it's very informative and after you've done all that and you believe foreseeing that hey guess what i can see myself working with this then you buy it okay you will save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of money that way take it from somebody who does the exact same thing and with that i will say thank you so much for joining me on this journey thank you so much for looking for for being with me on this vlog and i'll see you in the next one guys stay safe Stay blessed. Bye.